it's not just the money you put into your business as an investment. It's the time you put into your business as an investment. And most people who are coming out of a job, I don't care if you're working five hours a week or 80 hours a week, most people are used to being told what to do. Mm -hmm. And the minute that is gone, I've seen the best 80 hour work weekers work weekers 80 hour a week workers <laughs> yeah, that's what i meant yeah. to say come into this and and stumble and fail and their work ethic sinks because they didn't have somebody looking, telling them you have to show up yeah like invest your time invest your money invest your time invest your money because your business depends on you Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. And I'm in studio with one of my best buddies, legend in the insurance business, Mr. Chris Ball. Hey, Roger. Chris, it's you and me again. Dude, I love I love our time together on the podcast. It's you and me. Yeah. We're not playing golf today. No. We're in nope. here today. We're helping people. Talking shop. I like it. We're Let's, talking shop. Yes. It's kind of a shop table we have here. Let's we do. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's cut some stuff up. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. I'm all for it. Let's go. Um, we recently went through a series called Things I Wish I Knew. And as we were going through that series, we talked about finding a home, <laughs> yeah. finding a niche, mm-hmm. finding a process. And I think those are some questions that we hear a lot from agents. Yeah. Uh, through our journey. You know, we, we get DM'd all the time. We're getting we get reached out to. Uh, what's the best way? What's the best product? What's the best process? How do you guys do this? But in our own journeys, we've had our own self-discovery too. Yes. And as we were going through this, you started hitting me with all of your own discoveries and you said, but some of these things are, we didn't cover some of the things I wish I knew. Right. And I think it's important for you guys to hear some of the stuff that this guy wished that he knew. Yeah. That's fun. Maybe there's some of the things that you wish you knew. You may be thinking some of these things. Yeah. They might be. Yeah. I they might you. <laughs> Let's say it this way. Let's say you're new um, and you're trying to figure it out. Yeah. You don't even know what you should know. Right? That's kind of the, that's kind of the don't state even, of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it was for me, for sure. A wealthy person once said to me this, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. That's why you don't have it. <laughs> mm. yeah. I'm like, having is attached to knowing. Yeah. And when you don't know what you're supposed to know. You don't even know that. Yes. And so you're oblivious to the thing that you're supposed to know. And that's actually the thing keeping you from having the thing that you want. Very good. It's like Twilight Zone stuff. Yes. Yes. I was like that. But that's what you're talking about today. Yeah. Yeah. That is what we're, what we're talking about. You're saying that mm-hmm. you're saying that they don't even know. You didn't know what right. to ask. Correct. You didn't even know what you. Yeah. If I could put a pin and some ideas. A time machine. A, yes. If I could have a time a machine. A time machine. And talk to that cat and help him out. Or even go back and do it again. Like, how would it be different? That's kind of the question. For so me. what type of time machine would it be? Uh, more than likely, it's going to be a hot tub. It'd be a hot tub time machine. Not if it was Adam. <laughs> if it was Adam, what kind of time oh, machine man, would it be? Such a such an interesting cat. What? It Is would it, be a Dr. Strange. <laughs> Dr. Seuss. Dr. Who? <laughs> yes. Dr. Strange, didn't he do? He does time machine, too. Yeah, yes. time, not time machines. Was it the what te- he had it, like a warp? Or is it, what, what is it called, Adam? Is it called the Tesseract? That's the wrong. One. It's the yeah. time well, we just time lost, infinity. Oh, we man. just lost half our audience. Yes, I know. Well, some of the people are going. I watched that. <laughs> yeah. I watched Doctor Strange yes. do that thing. That's true. Uh, but you're talking about like good old fashioned hot tub time machine. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that. Actually, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of that movie Seventeen again. Did you ever see that movie? No. What's his name? I can't remember who's in it. It's not important. Is that a rom-com? It kind of is. You're into Matthew those rom-coms. Perry's in it. It's an older 90s, 90s 2000 movie, but he, he time travels back to when he was 17. So it's him with all his knowledge that he has as an adult, ah. as a 17-year-old. It's yeah. pretty interesting, right? So, so Matthew Perry's making this episode? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, in honor of Matthew Perry. Yeah, Matthew Perry. He's there you go. It. But so, he wasn't in Hot Tub Time Machine. No, no, Who was in that movie? John Cusack. I don't even know. I was saying, throw the parachute on there. Throw the parachute. So, Chris, there's some things you wish you knew. We're rewinding time. I'm going this way on the clock now. We're rewinding time. Yes. And you had some questions. You said, these are some things I wish I knew. Yeah. 
What's yeah. one of those things, man? The very first one is if if someone else can do it, I can do it too. That's the very first idea. If someone else can do it, maybe I should even say it differently. If someone else can do it at a high level, I can do it too. So, at a high level? Yes, at a high level. Ah. Because, um, and, and this just goes back to some background, and I think everybody, you know, you have a story and what you went through and all that stuff, but I, I grew up a, a kid in a factory town in uh, Battle Creek, Michigan. Holla at Battle Creek listeners. Holla. <laughs> Did but, you say holla? Yeah, yeah. And the dream of all of Battle Creek, the big dream was to work at Kellogg's, the big dream. And uh, when you grow up in a factory town, sometimes you you have that's a... That's because they made Kellogg's cereal. That's right. In and, your town. Correct. Yes, I need to clarify that. Kellogg's, that's the home of Kellogg's cereal. Honeycombs. Nuts. Yes. No, that's Post. I know this because oh, all of cereal oh, is see, made. I got it wrong. All of cereal was made at Battle Creek at one time. Rice Krispies, correct. Snap it, crackle, pop. Yes. Cornflakes. Yep. Yep. You want to keep going? Raisin bread. <laughs> yes, correct. Okay. Perfect. So, um, which one do you like? In the factory <laughs> town, like that, that's the big dream. Yeah. Possibly to to work at Kellogg's, right? Okay. Or uh, your parents had a dream for you to do something special. Different. K. Right. Yes. Special Who K. Ate special K. Anyway, I don't even it's, know. It's not bad. Why would they strawberry. make special K? So <laughs> it's like modified cornflakes. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, it's not interesting. Um, so when I was presented with this idea of you know everything that you presented to me, and then the sales aspect of it, the thing I kept going back to was, can I do it? I think I can. Can I do it? I think I can. But it was at a it was at a survival level, mm. and I saw you do it. But I saw you doing it at a high level, and I thought it was different for you. Like I think people need to hear that. I don't know if they. Why understand do you think that. it was different for me? Um, I think there are there are folks who experience certain experiences in their life, and they believe that some people have something that they don't. And their makeup, an ability, an ability, a skill set, um, or yeah, yeah, they have top shelf access to some abilities that you don't have, and until you um, you get around the room, I, I think that's a big piece of this. Getting into association, like being mm. in a relationship with you, and yeah. and seeing your frustrations in areas that you need to grow in yourself. What? <laughs> I know. Or what? Or being in a room with other people who are performing at a high level and hearing their stories mm. that they overcame something. Their struggle stories. Yeah. One of the things I talk to about with high producers is, man, you look like Superman. And if you look like Superman, it's hard to help people grow. That's if right. you aren't vulnerable or real about your struggle, your journey in this. Yeah. So that's that's what I can appreciate about our relationship because it gave me a handhold and access to something. And it took a long time to get there for me. Uh, well, relatively long time, but it felt like it took a long time where I was like, man, if someone else can do this at a high level, mm -hmm. I have everything in me to accomplish that. So I, I really wanted our listeners to hear that. Like if you're sitting there and you're wondering, man, I, I do 1500 a week. Boo. Like, I don't feel great about it. Want, want, as the kids say today, you know, um, I do 2,500. I don't feel like I'm at a high wah, level. Wah, wah. Right. <laughs> and, uh, if you're, if you're honest with yourself about your work and you're in community with people who are performing at a high level, you have what it takes to be able to do it. If someone can do a thing, someone else can do a thing. Yes. Cause you yes. can watch it and duplicate it and maybe even get better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So that was an important thing. Except I just, dunk. Yeah. <laughs> you could. There's a price to it. Can could you? I do it? No. I, no, I cannot right this minute. No. Oh, yeah. Can I do it later? Probably not. No. You know, I'm pushing 50. But, that, but that's a physical limitation. It is a physical yeah. limitation. We're not talking about physical limitations right. here. Correct. Yeah. We're talking about ability to learn something yes. and to learn to say words yeah. and to listen yeah. and communicate in a way that helps other people achieve a goal. Yeah, to connect with people. To connect. Yeah. And if someone can do a thing, you can do a thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's the first thing you wish you knew. That is the very first thing. Yeah. And when you first met me, yeah. you thought... I thought, well, this guy's selling for years. There's a, he's got a skill set that's different. And like, I thought it was different. I told Ro like Roger when I came to Louisville, I believed like. Are you speaking to them about me while I'm here yeah, with you? Yes, I did. That was weird. <laughs> that was I didn't know strange, what he's saying there. Yeah, it was the CEOs that were in my ministry that I was working with like 
oh, they just, they're different. They're different kind of people. They have different DNA. Like yeah. I wouldn't have said it that way, but that's how I felt yeah. about it. And then over time, again, when you're in the right room with the right people and you're learning and you have a good attitude and you're fighting like a dog, like a you dog. realize that's what everybody else is doing. He's fighting like a dog. <laughs> everybody else is fighting like a dog. No matter how sharp they look, mm -hmm. they've got that dog. Some in people them. have been handed a few things. Sure. But mm -hmm. they usually don't. Um, they're usually the benefactors of somebody else who fought like a dog. Yes. Somebody did. Somebody fought like a somebody dog. Somebody fought like a dog. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Cool, man. So if someone can do a thing, someone else can do a thing, and you need to know that. Yes. Next. Yes. The next thing that uh, was a limitation on the front end of my journey was investing isn't spending. You thought? I thought... When you talked you about thought spending was spending. Yes. I thought everything was spending. You thought everything. everything was spending. So when you talked to me about leads, I believed that I was spending money on leads. And because of that, it put a limit on the number of leads that I would order each week. Yeah. So um, if I started over and had this um, this on my bulletin board, investing is not spending, that leads are money. That's probably another piece I'd have on my bulletin board. It would allow me to um, take the lid off of that, knowing that there's a vending machine that I put money in and money comes out, and I just keep doing that. So that's a big one for me too. We've literally had agents when we talk to them about the opportunity, and then we talk about spending seven hundred fifty to a thousand dollars a week in leads. No, I didn't even say that correctly, did I? Uh, probably not. No. No. It's investing. Yes. Right. But mm -hmm. what the agent heard was spending. Yes. That's what they're, that's what they hear. The agent heard instantly spending yeah. 800 to a thousand mm -hmm. buck, bucks a week in leads. That's, yeah. that's 45, 48 mm -hmm. to 50,000 plus a year in an investment. You want yeah. me to, I'm leaving my job and I'm trying to make a hundred grand or, and I'm making 60 and you're telling me mm -hmm. that I got to invest 50 grand before I make any money. And if that's your mindset, that's wrong because no, you don't have to invest, no. right? No, that's a big learning curve. <laughs> yes, it's a huge learning curve. But some agents yeah. and some people get stuck on that. Yes. They mm -hmm. go, yeah, I'm more cut out for yeah. a job. Well, that's, I think that's a really good point, yeah. Roger. I feel like the job thinking is uh, trend, trend, it's different because when you, you were training me and we had these conversations, you would say, uh, you are in charge of you, Inc., yeah. Like you are now the CEO of your of your business. Your number one employee is yourself. And that that speaks to spending versus investing here, too, because it's not just the money you put into your business as an investment. It's the time you put into your business as an investment. And most people who are coming out of a job, I don't care if you're working five hours a week or 80 hours a week. Most people are used to being told what to do. Mm -hmm. And the minute that is gone. I've seen the best 80 hour work weekers, work weekers, 80 hour a week workers. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant yeah. to say. Come into this and, and stumble and fail. And their work ethic sinks because they didn't have somebody looking, telling them you have to show up. Yeah. Like invest your time, invest your money, invest your time, invest your money because your business depends on you. They're good the at very, following rules. Yes. Following a protocol. Yeah. But then when it comes to managing their own time, they see it differently. Or managing their own money from their business, they see it differently. Yeah. Because they've never thought about their money in terms of a business. Correct. They've only ever thought about it yeah. in terms of income versus spending. Yeah. That was a stretch for me. Yeah. Um, I, think, I, I think I've always had a pretty good work ethic. So that wasn't that big of a stretch. But there were times, you know, where I'd hit, hit a number early in the day and I'd call you and I'm like, hey, I'm at $2,000. And you'd say, uh, what are you going to do now? And I, well, I guess I'm going to go home. <laughs> I guess I'm going to go home. <laughs> so um, I'm going to take the day yeah, off now. Yeah, I'm done. I'm right? going to do I'm this every now. day for the rest of my yeah. life now. Understanding <laughs> that the, uh, the business depends on you as the number one producer. Even when you're growing a team, the business depends on you as the number one producer for mm -hmm. us for a period of time because you're modeling how to do the process. That's right. So... Uh, that was a big one for me. Investing is not spending. Investing is not spending. Yeah. And there's another great video that you can watch, and I think Adam will throw it up, put it in the link somewhere. It's going to be somewhere. Yes. Yep. And if you don't see it here, look in the look in the uh, comments. You'll find yeah. it there on 
investing versus spending yeah. when it comes to leads uh, if you're getting started in the business. How are we doing, Adam? We doing all right? Cool. The best podcast you've ever heard. Man, that's <laughs> awesome. I appreciate that. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> that's Chris right. Is, you do Chris is having <laughs> full-on conversations outside of our podcast. That's right. Chris, you said um, as you were going through things and as you would learn things, you would say it's hard for new people to understand this until they go through it. What did you mean by that? Because I think there was something else you wish you knew. Yeah. Um, there's a, if you're a video game lover, you'll understand this. There's a fog of war. Like, and you're playing video games. There's the map isn't revealed until you actually start moving in the game. Yeah. So as you move, the map grows and then you can see all your enemies on the map, where their bases are, all of that. You see the full picture of that. Um, it's kind of like this in this in this business. And because of the limited scope on that front side, um, I think it's important if you're gonna put a pull it on put it on your bulletin board, what you're experiencing now is not what you will experience in three years. Mm -hmm. And I I see it everywhere. I see it in decisions that are made um for people personally because they're in the middle of some type of emotional bubble that they're living in, whether it's their personal experiences or a transition or, from one yeah. life stage to another. Yeah. They can only see what's directly in front of them. Mm -hmm. And so they get into this experience and they're like, well, I didn't sell anything this week. I can't live like this. You're right. Nobody can. <laughs> if that's every week, <laughs> if that's every week, but if you're judging the rest of your life on this week, <laughs> You yeah. might as well just go get in the casket. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because one day you're going to be there too. So what, why do anything? Yeah. Why, why bother? Or, you know, uh, two weeks, three weeks. And their, their attitude has mm. shifted because they're short-sighted in their experience. Yeah. And they believe this is going to be the next three years or five years. And that, who wants that, mm -hmm. right? But if you can commit to a process, a system if you can commit to investing in your business and getting around the right people, then you will start to win in certain areas, right? It's interesting because the same, it actually comes from the same thought process that you had when you said, I'm already at 2000 and it's only 1030. Yes, yeah. And I would mm -hmm. say, what are you going to do now? I think I'm going to go home. The thought process is it's always going to be like this, <laughs> yes. right? So every day is two grand. Yeah. Man. When you're flying high, yeah. you feel like, well, every day is going to be yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. I can do this every day. Correct. And you sabotage yes. because you feel like everything's going to be like that. Likewise, when things are not going well, sometimes you think every day is going to be like that and you sabotage. Yeah. yeah. So but but here's what, the truth. What you're it. saying is it's not always going to be like that. Yes. And here's the beauty of that. Yeah. The way you just identified that, mm -hmm. which I didn't even think of, is... Yes, you're right. Every day will be that. It's all happening at the same time, all the time. I say it all the time to you. Like, you and I. It's always happening. It's always. Everything's always happening at the same time, all the time. Yeah. The good stuff, the bad stuff, it all flows in the same ocean and, and we're in it. And that's you take fine. The good, yeah, this, you take the yes, bad. there's a song about that and a TV you take show. Them both. <laughs> there you have the facts of life. Boom. Boom. We're dropping all kinds of stuff in <laughs> yes, here today. Hot Tub Time yeah. Machine, The Facts of Life, Matthew <laughs> Perry. Look out, we're on a roll, everybody. Even if you're three years into this and you're in a struggle, what you're experiencing now isn't what you're going to experience in three years, right? right? No, it's If not. you can stay in the game. Yeah. I mean, if we could, we could do a whole podcast on our entire experience in this. Yeah. And I think a lot of people would say, I would have quit there. I would have quit there. I would have quit there. Oh, <laughs> Dude, look at if we look back for real, yeah, about some of the stuff we went through together, yeah, we had lots of justification to have bailed out, right? Yeah, right, mm -hmm. with lots, yeah, and some people would have, yes. Um, there was a video that I saw one time in preparation for a talk, and it was called Player Two. Hmm. Do you know what I'm getting ready to talk about? Yeah, Player yeah, Two. I think so, but go ahead. That's fine. Player Two about a kid who lost his dad uh, when he was about yeah. When he was about 10 years old. I re I, yes, I remember that. Lost his mm -hmm. dad. And he and his dad used to play uh, Mario Kart or one of those video games together all the time on the old GameCube. Mm -hmm. You remember the GameCube? Yeah. Nintendo yeah. GameCube? For those of you who are gamers, you might, you know, if you can get a vintage one, that'd be fun. Um, and um, for old time's sake, he pulled it out. 
and it might have been Atari. I don't know where I, it was. Actually, it was an Xbox. And he saw an he, old Xbox. He saw, mm-hmm. Yeah, he saw the game, mm-hmm. and he pulled it out, and he started playing, and it reminded him of all the times that he played with his dad. Right. And uh, he was about to finish one time. Well, and can I help yes. for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would race, and he would play these old races, and his dad had the top score. Correct. And once you have the top score, there's a ghost, a ghost. car. You're getting ahead of me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm Why so are you sorry. Ahead? I didn't mean to. I, uh, I'm, I'm getting right. ready to tell about the ghost. Yeah, 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 of course. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, so the, the top score would always be the ghost or the phantom uh, player, and yeah. you could always see how far ahead the phantom player was Correct. from you. Mm-hmm. And as a kid, he was always trying to catch his dad. Right. Always trying to catch his dad. He never could. He never could catch up. And his dad would always win. His dad was always win. But he saw his son getting better and better and better, of course, and then he, he lost his dad in a tragedy. And he pulls out this game, and he's, and he's playing. And he said he loved to play because it reminded him of when he played his dad so he could see his dad racing. And one time, he tried so hard to catch his dad, he overtook his dad, and he realized, if I go across that finish line, I'm going to set the new top score, Yeah. and my dad's ghost will be gone forever. Right. And so he pumped the brakes, yeah. and then his dad crossed first. Yeah. So he could always be chasing his dad. The point of the story is this. It gets emotional, right? When you yeah. think about people setting mm-hmm. the pace for you. He was continuing to develop. And so what he thought was so hard at one point in his life to ever beat his dad's top score yeah. came to a point where he had to pump the brakes because he actually outperformed his dad. Right. So what you're experiencing now is not what you're going right. to experience later. You will get better yeah. as you go through the challenges. You'll figure out where the fog of war, when it clears, yeah. where all the enemies are, where the minefields yeah. are, mm-hmm. where all those things are, and the fog will lift, yeah. and you'll figure out how to navigate it. And then at some point in the future, someone will be looking at you saying, well, yeah, it's easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's easy for you, <laughs> right? And you need to remind them hey, that, there, hey, man. if someone else can do it, yeah, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do mm-hmm. it. Investing is not spending. Yeah. And spending is not investing. And get those right. Correct. Investment in your business and you is the thing that brings the most value. And then the last one, of course, is what you're experiencing now is what uh, is not what you'll experience in three yeah. years. Chris, um, let's wrap this up. Um, how powerful has it been to be in a journey where you're seeing p- people fight to win? And where are some of those inflection points where people give up and other people push through? And what does it do when they do that? I'll leave you with that thought. Yeah, There's an inflection point. You're yeah. going to come to a point. It's yeah. like... A challenge point of conflict, mm-hmm. like so hard, like frustration. Maybe you've hit your, what you thought was your spending limit, not your yeah. investing limit, but your spending limit. Yes. Or like you've, you've had too many bad weeks in a row. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What, yeah. What, mm-hmm. Like you've coached a lot of people yeah. now. You've come through it yourself. Mm-hmm. You're helping teams win. You're helping agents win. What are some of those inflection points and what happens when people push through versus, right. the versus one thing- recede? The one thing that I I say repeatedly about this business that Mm -hmm. I love the most is it reveals it to every single person who's in it, it reveals their area of growth. You can't hide. It will show up. What does that mean? It would mean um, if you have uh, fears, those will be revealed. Boom. They come to the, they rise to the surface and that's the inflection point. It's the fear. If it's, um, you're the person who does everything on their own and you have all the answers that will be revealed in this because you won't be able to progress and you're going to have to talk to somebody and ask for help and stop pretending that you're doing all the work. That, that stuff, if you have uh, ghosts of your past, of your, of your father like in the game mm-hmm. that you can't beat, that will be revealed in this because you're carrying baggage into something that requires you to bet on yourself. Those are three specific ones that I brought up, but there's many, many more. The thing I like is you step to the edge, and if you can take the leap, you become a different person, completely different person. But if you don't, you will always come back to that edge, always, repeatedly. Or sometimes you walk away from the edge. Yeah, and you're wondering, did I live up to my potential? Yeah. That's what I love about this business. It's the most exciting part about the business because when you see people dive in, man, and change and become a, a completely confident, different person until they hit that next one. <laughs> that's awesome. It's really going to hit another one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's that's the crazy so thing. Up. Yeah. So mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. leveling up. We're yeah. on the we're on the uh, uh, video game thing, man. Like <laughs> yeah, we are. You, you, yeah. when you level up, you don't ever have to go back. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't ever have to go back. Yeah. And uh, 
you get to you get the secret hacks and the the cheat codes yeah. and you start hanging around long enough, you learn how to get to the top level. These You're doing podcasts and telling people how to play the game and all that stuff. Right? And then people <laughs> coming out of the woodwork saying, That's right. you guys, you guys. Yeah. So, hey, we love you guys for, yeah. for watching and listening to our content. If you found value in what we shared today and some of Chris's things that he wish he knew, um, that if someone else can do it, I can do it. That investing isn't spending. And that what you're experiencing now uh, you will not experience that in three years. If you found value in that and you know somebody else in the business who are looking to get in the business or maybe struggling, we share this video with them uh, and hit yeah. like and hit subscribe and comment to us. Um, we love it when you engage. Um, we uh, would like to hear more from you so that we can be a bigger help to our community. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, man. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Good times. And thank you guys. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast.